Sam Altman fired and rehired, and I want you to take that idea with a concept or a big question that I would ask you around AI and its potential risks and threats. What if, just try this on, what if there was an AI technology that was so powerful that it could unlock military encryption? Well, there's no question that that technology is eventually coming. However, is it knocking on the door today? And if it was here today, could all of these softwares, all of the, the these mil military institutions, all of the ways that we do banking, could they catch up fast enough to protect the average day citizen, to protect the world that we live in today and all of its complexities in a moment when AI could accelerate to that point and we are completely caught off guard. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about today is this new technology that has been put under the limelight uh, called QSTAR. And I think it's important to note that right before Sam Altman got fired. There were a bunch of researchers that leaked some information that they were concerned about QSTAR's potentiality, especially around its ability to solve mathematical problems that have never been inputted as a data point. So just imagine an AI that has now figured out how to solve math problems on its own without giving it the answer beforehand. Now, a lot of you looking at the LLMs we're working with and OpenAI, ChatGPT, etc., cetera, uh, may already think that that was possible, but it's not. The traditional large language model is input in, input out, and that's why it hallucinates every now and then. If someone could put in a formula like two plus two equals five, and if that was an input value, it would actually sometimes tell you two plus two equals five, which we all know it doesn't. However, this Q plus won't do that. It is trained mathematically, and it is trained in a way to chase an answer without even human interaction when given a task. It's probably the closest thing to AGI that we know of uh, that has been somewhat leaked and exposed to the public. And this could be a massive threat to the world that we live in and your everyday uh, exposure to the world from the passwords that you use and your everyday interactions online to how you do banking, to how banking uh, the banking system sends and receives transactions to military options and military encryptions that protect our nuclear powers across across the globe. I mean, this is a serious uh, concern if it's real. And according to the leaks that have come out around the researchers at OpenAI, they're also concerned. And the timing around Sam Altman's getting fired and rehired, I think is no coincidence. So let's go into what is this QSTAR? How is it different? And what are kind of the pros and cons? So uh, QSTAR is in included in QSTAR is what's called this Q learning. And it's a subset of reinforcement uh, learning that allows the AI to autonomously learn decision-making through trial and error. So it's like, in a way, a lot like a human that goes out and we say, go learn this. And if you make a mistake, learn from it and don't do it again. Uh, and a big deal is you can give it this goal and it doesn't require any human action, human interaction after you've given it the goal. Uh, alongside with Q learning is what's called a Q star algorithm. And this is the algorithm in which it's built in that enhances the AI's problem solving by combining both uh, semantic and syntactic uh, information, very similar to an LLM, so that you can talk to it uh, to give it a goal or a task. Now, some of the potentials with this QSTAR technology is it could solve future mathematical problems that we can't even comprehend as a human. An example is uh, there's some demos of this QSTAR out there online, and you can see where when given a problem, it will at first from a human's perception, find the quickest solution, right? Visually, maybe from like one dot to the next dot or in a maze, like to go through the maze in the shortest uh, avenue. However, QSTAR did something very unique and very shocking. It found ways to solve the problem without the way that would be considered ethical or maybe moral. It found a way to actually hack the code and like get underneath it and then manipulate the code so that it could solve the answer even quicker. And so when you give an AI like this a task 
and it solves what you would think is the fastest direction, but you don't turn it off, it'll keep grinding and grinding and grinding on it and may even discover a solution that we never even could comprehend as a human race uh, with our you know, finite uh, brain capacity and ability as a human. So uh, potentially scary, but also really exciting, right? Uh, another thing is the enhancement around analytical problem-solving capabilities. We could put some of the largest problems in front of this, like you could use the um, semantic and syntactic uh, information system, like an LLM, and ask it to solve something like poverty, or ask it to solve something in the market, like a financial gain or a financial goal. And it would operate and keep working and working and working, even after it got the answer that was good for you or good for humanity or good for whatever you know problem you were trying to solve. But if you didn't turn it off, it might keep going, going, going and go past some of these ethical and moral compasses that we put our lens through that it just frankly doesn't have coded. And so again, uh, a lot of pros there, but also you can, you can see the threats, right? You can see the cons. Uh, in addition, enhance problem solving across various sectors. And I wanna talk about a couple of these sectors one including the medical industry. This is already happening with AI. The advancements we're seeing in cures for cancers, the advancements we're seeing for uh, medical advancements, ways that we're able to scan, take th things that we already had and data sets we already had, run it through an AI and then find uh, parallels, find similarities among patients goes through the roof and we can diagnose with higher perfection, we can find and discover things in the body that aren't supposed to be there with higher probabilities, all with AI already. Now add this mathematical element to it, and we might actually start getting answers to things that we never could conceive. Um, improved human AI collaboration. So in any type of research or project that a normal human would be doing, involve an AI like QSTAR, and now you can have it you know, figure out this problem and its goal is to get there in the fastest or shortest distance. But say it's it's not trained well, it's not quite getting there. And as a human, you even know like how to get there faster than it's taking it to process. Well, you can actually interrupt it and you can involve or invoke human interaction in the process to help kind of train it. Just like you would send an employee or a worker or an agent out to go do something. Uh, a good analogy of this is go plant a grove of trees out in the land and an AI model might dig one hole, drop all the seeds based on the information that it knows. Whereas, you know, a typical human, unless you're like under the age of five, would know better not to do that. And so you kind of have to train it in addition to just the goal. You have to you know, spread the seeds out. You might have to tell it and train it that they need to be so far away and it's gonna need this much distance from each other uh, and so forth. So it will require that type of interaction, but it, that can be easily trained uh, on the front side. And then just automation. Think of all the things that we're going to be able to automate during this process. One of the, the levers that is motivating this Q star uh, AI is self-driving cars. And the automation of what used to require a human will become more efficient and more safe with this type of numerical mathematical AI that actually is not just based in language and hallucinates, you know, some of the time. It actually is using real math and real problem solving skills to get to an answer. So these are all incredible pros. Now on the con side, some of the risks of QSTAR we've already talked about, this ability to solve problems like go hack this account, go break into this server, go uh, decrypt this military encryption. Or with a lot of softwares, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of online softwares, the code is actually exposed. And what happens is they run it through a software that scrambles the code and then hides a little key that's like putting a needle in a haystack to find, and you need that key to unlock and transform the code into something that you and I could actually read. Well, imagine that you ask this AI to decrypt 
that software, that code, and now that code is open to the public, where right now, in order to do that, would take years and years and years based on processing power and the technology that we currently have. So the risk of closed source software, the risk of proprietary software getting out into the public uh, significantly from a risk standpoint goes way up. Now, to understand QSTAR's learning process, it combines a Q, the Q learning's decision-making process with the A-STAR search algorithm's ability to offer dynamic learning. So what this means is it allows continuous adoption and optimization of decisions. So it takes an answer, locks it, and then goes, let's keep trying to get answer. And if answer that comes later is better, it will lock that one in and then keep optimizing. A great way to say this is it's a self-learning AI constantly optimizing. So what kinds of tasks could you put a QSTAR AI on that you would want to comp constantly optimize? Well, in my industry, in the financial industry, it's trading strategies. Imagine that we wake up in a world where hedge funds and the, the financial institutions have an AI software so advanced that it's constantly optimizing. It's constantly competing with the other AIs that exist in the market. What changes in the landscape? How much pure does the market become? But also, could it become more manipulated? All right, so, so wrapping things up with this QSTAR technology that has really shocked the researchers at OpenAI, and I think even ties into Sam's getting fired and rehired, and we'll talk about that in just a second, is the future of AGI. This is, right now we're in the world of AI. Some people think we're at AGI, but AGI is where we we literally get to a point that an AI can do and think and comprehend at the capacity of the human mind. It can problem solve, it can digest, optimize. It basically has the capacity of the human brain. And QSTAR learning could be a significant milestone. I shouldn't say could, I, I'm saying it is. Like it is helping create the future for AGI and how much closer uh, we're going to get to it, which I actually think is why Sam got fired. I believe that Sam's enthusiasm to get us to AGI, that milestone, to have his name even. Maybe there's some some uh, some type of complex he's dealing with also around this. But you can tell if you watch if you watch his socials, if you're listening to him when he's at conferences, he is very committed to be the AGI name, to be the guy who unlocked AGI, and that might come with taking some substantial risks, very similar to when we experimented with nuclear power. There was this probability that us detonating this nuclear bomb, even though the probability was very small, that it could actually end the universe. And they knew that, even though they did it. And so are we playing with fire? Is this a similar, a similar analogy to our nuclear, our now nuclear power structure where we have the benefits of you know fairly inexpensive power fairly uh, efficient power but also the possibility of just global annihilation and i would say that we're kind of at this all Alp oppenheimer uh, moment with ai where this could be a insane blessing and a massive tragedy if not regulated if not watched closely enough now we talked a little bit already about Sam's involvement in his pursuit towards AGI. And I think what happened is the researchers got to the board and said, hey, we are playing with fire here. And Sam is saying foot all the way down on the gas pedal. And the board saw that as a potential risk, not having that kind of profit center in mind because OpenAI has kind of shifted from this nonprofit to a for-profit model. And so Sam got fired because of, I'm not saying it's what happened. It's still the untold story, but maybe because of this risk that he was willing to take. And then what did Sam do in retaliation? He said, okay, well, I'm taking my whole team with me and we're taking off to another company. The board freaks out. All these members of OpenAI had his back. And if you really look at it, Sam got the best of both worlds. Now they knew they had to bring him back or OpenAI would implode because all the team members who really are the geniuses behind this working would have left with him. So now they all stayed. He also lost his board position, but really has all of the power. He has all of the leverage. He doesn't need to be on the board. They already know that he has the social cred that he could up and leave with the whole team and really has none of the liability. So this whole play 
to maybe protect us from AGI or this potential Q-Star uh, breakthrough that might be able to crack military encryption codes may have actually given Sam even more power and more control of our future around AI. And this is something that I would be watching really closely. Now, this doesn't uh, encapsulate all the advancements that we've been having in AI. It also doesn't. Uh, it also doesn't include a lot of the other conspiracy theories that are out there or tin hat ideas around why Sam got fired. I would imagine because they're going to be bringing in new board members to watch OpenAI, that at some point they're going to have to debrief everyone on what happened and someone is going to talk. Someone is going to explain what happened. Frankly, I think it's something that they should come out with right now because it's something that you just can't keep the lid on this forever. And it's always better to control the narrative than have a mystery of narratives like this one as one of the possibility. Now, I am weighing my bets on this side. Obviously, this is not financial advice. I don't know how you could use it financially to, to, to have any type of gain or loss. Uh, however, my bets are that it was something like this, that there was some type of technological scare, and that's why Sam got fired. And then when he knew what levers to pull by taking all the employees with him, uh, he got his power back and some. So that kind of wraps things up for our discussion really about this new development around OpenAI's QSTAR discovery. And I think it really does a, a tremendous job of telling the public where we are now. We are moving so fast with AI that I think AGI is right around the corner and it may be released in chat GPT-5 and maybe even 6. And there are a bunch of open source AIs that are already ahead of this step. They're already releasing versions of these type of agent AIs that are already kind of doing this and already uh, doing self-guided work, self uh, perpetuated thinking and innovation and optimizing. Uh, you can go online and find multiple other AI projects that are working uh, similar or in parallel with OpenAI. They're not the only ones that have the grasp on the market. However, OpenAI does have the user base and they also are building the new GPTs, which will contribute to kind of the growth and development of AI. And I think that alone also is a testament to Sam's commitment to really cracking up the AGI model, even though these new GPTs that just came out also could be a massive risk, not being able to regulate and watch like what are all these GPTs doing that people are creating? So that wraps up our segment on the OpenAI advancement and the, the technology breakthroughs that we've been having. Obviously, if you're finding the, if you're watching and pursuing and trying to stay up to date on the AI developments, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, try to be safe out there, guys. Stay up to date on this AI stuff and we'll see you around on the next video. Thank you.